Shalom, shalom to the family. Street baptism back with more knowledge, wisdom, and understanding that we believe comes directly from the Father through His Son, Yeshua, Yahushua, or Yahweh Shai HaMashiach, whichever pronunciation somebody decides to use is all right, according to the Word of God, as long as you call on the Father or the Creator in the name of His only begotten or the reputation of His only begotten. Praise God that He sent here as the sacrifice for the world, being chiefly Israel and everybody else. Afterwards, hallelujah, um, much love to the family and the individuals trying to follow in the footsteps of the Messiah and live while he lived, while he was here in truth and sincerity by way of humility. Um, street baptism back with more foundational principles. We're going to continue to try and build this curriculum up on the YouTube channel so people understand what's at the basis of what we teach here at street baptism or what's at the basis of or what should be at the basis of how you learn about the father. Praise God, because ethnicity and being chosen and elect is less significant than understanding the essence of God and walking in that. Praise God. If you have somebody, for example, who's not a part of the chosen or the elect nation and they understand the essence of God, that's more significant than somebody that's a part of the chosen or the elect nation that don't understand the essence of God that's not walking in it. Praise God. So with that being said, um, Psalm 131 is going to be the next group of scriptures. Um, in the sequence of the curriculum inside of foundational principles, forgive me. Nose running a little bit right now, forgive me, y'all. Um, so we read in Psalm 131. It says, A song of degrees of David. It says, Lord, interesting. This psalm is called a song of degrees. A degree is a rank. Praise God. This curriculum has different degrees to it or grades. D degree or grade. Grade goes ultimately back to gar in the Hebrew, which means a movement related also to agriculture, which has to do with land. Praise God. But I don't want to go too far off into that. It's just interesting that this is a song of degrees. Praise God of David. It says, Lord, my heart is not haughty. So King David is saying his mind is not high. Haughty is a height. It means to be high, to be up there. So he's saying his thoughts, because that's where your thoughts are in your heart or your mind. His thoughts are not haughty, nor are mine eyes lofty, meaning he doesn't have a lofty perception. A loft is something that's high. Well, if you have a lofty perception, that means you're looking down on people. So he's saying my thoughts are not haughty. My mind, my heart isn't haughty. My eyes aren't lofty either. I don't have a haughty perception or outlook on things. I don't have a high or exalted outlook on things. It says, neither do I exercise myself in great matters. Neither do I move forward as part two. Um, um, forgive me, it's Psalm 131, where go into the Hebrew. This word exercise means to walk or go forward. It says, neither do I exercise myself or move forward in great matters or in things too high for me. Hmm. Now, what is a great matter or something too high for you? That's something that the Most High hasn't given you understanding on. This is the reason behind why people always engage in conversations where they don't have any information. Then it turns into strife, contention or argument. It turns into uh, no edification or lack of edification, etc. So he says, I don't exercise myself in great matters or in things that are too high for me either. That's related to being proud, having a haughty perception. For example, if you walk in a room full of people and they, and they in there talking about Things that have to do with um, cars and being a mechanic and you feel what I'm saying, that car engine and the battery and brakes and you don't know anything about it or you only know a little bit about it. And you up in there like, man, yeah, no, that, that ain't really right. I, I hear what you're saying, but you really got to put the joint over there and then tie it. We be looking at you like we work in here every day. We don't know everything about the job, but we do work in here every day. You ain't never worked it here. You only see what people talk about concerning cars and making them on TV and on YouTube. It's going to be outrageous. This is why King David is not living his life like that, because it makes you look like a fool or it's known that you're a fool when you speak about things that you know nothing about. This is why King David as the king. King David is the king at this time. Nobody has a greater status on earth than him. With that being said, even as the king, he can humble down. Hmm. It says what? Surely I have behaved my, my fault. Surely I have behaved and quieted myself in verse two as a child that is weaned of his mother. Foundational principles. Praise God. Now, this is directly related to baptism, but we'll hold on. 
because that's not part of foundational principles, baptism. But that is related to baptism because you're reborn. Well, the beginning of your walk with Christ, once you become reborn, is your baptism. Um, that's extra, though. The point we want is surely I have behaved and quieted myself as a child that is weaned of his mother as or like means a simile. So he's saying he's living his life the same way a child that's weaned of his mother is living a life. Well, give yourself a visual. If you wean in a child or the child is on the titty, that means they crying out. They can't do nothing for themselves. They need you for everything. They need you for that milk. They need you to change that uh, diaper, etc., etc. This is what we need the father for. This is the parallel. King David said, I have behaved and quieted myself as a child that's weaned of his mother. Then he says, my soul is even as a weaned child. The word for soul in the Hebrew, most of the time, as here, is nefesh, which means your life. Your soul is where your spirit is reposing. Well, your spirit is reposing in your body right now, which consists of your life. Every day you wake up, you go somewhere, you stay in the house, you meet people, you eat food, etc. That's your life. So he says his soul or his life is even as a weaned child. So he behaves as a, a weaned child. And he's quiet like a weaned child. And he's living like a weaned child every day of his life. Praise God. That's interesting. This is the, exemplica the exemplification of pure wisdom in the scriptures. Pure wisdom. Why? Because it's pure humility. Praise God. Hmm. It says, let Israel hope in the Lord from henceforth, from this point and forever. Now, what does hoping in the Lord have to do with what King David was already saying? Because a hope is an expectation. As a child weaned of his mother, you expect, expect what? To be fed, to be put to sleep, to be burnt, to be taken care of, to be loved, etc., etc. This is what King David is saying or speaking in the sight of the Most High. Because the Most High is our father and wisdom is our mother, according to Sirach chapter 15 in many other scriptures and besides that wisdom is personified as a woman regardless so you have the nurturing aspect with wisdom being personified as a woman spiritually speaking or figuratively speaking and then you have the most high being your father who he provides the chastisement and the discipline before the nurture comes according to Sirach chapter 18 praise god so why is this a part of foundational principles because everything we read in as far as the curriculum entitled foundational principles Everything we read, it has to do with humility and the beginning of your walk. What do you do first when you find out about the true understanding of the word? When you come out of that, um, the, um, the mindset of Christianity, when you put off conventional Christianity and Catholicism, when you remove from these different denominations, being a Protestant, being a Methodist, being a Baptist, being a seven day Adventist, when you put uh, being a Presbyterian, when you put all of this stuff to the side. When you put all of this stuff to the side and you actually receive the pure understanding of how you should look at the word, these things that we read in foundational principles, Proverbs chapter two, verse one through verse nine, Psalm chapter 19, verse seven through verse 14, Ecclesiastes chapter one, verse one through verse 11, Sirach chapter one, verse one, uh, forgive me, et cetera, et cetera. These scriptures, and this is number six. It's going to be seven groups of scriptures, and then we're going to move on to seven chapters. Praise God. So, Sirach chapter 10 and verse 12 and verse 13 will be last. But Psalm 131 is important. All these things have to do with the beginning of your walk and gaining humility. So you can understand what is what should be valued truly. Then you come to the most high in sincerity. That's why all these scriptures specifically were placed in the curriculum, because they have to do all of them have to do with value and wisdom, having humility. And having humility and value and wisdom so that you can learn and the father can provide to you more. Praise God. Mm -hmm. So with that being said, hopefully that was understood. Actually, I'm going to run through it one more time. Forgive me. All right. So Psalm 131, it says, Lord, my heart is not haughty, nor mine eyes lofty. Neither do I exercise myself in great matters or in things too high for me because we, we shouldn't. We should stay where we are. And actually, I'm going to add. Forgive me, y'all. I'm going to add. When you look at this psalm from a spiritual perspective, all throughout the Bible, the Bible teaches, if you don't know something, be humble. You don't know it. That's basic. But the Most High put us right where we'll be balanced on earth as people. What do I mean by that? Mm -mm. 
Forgive me. What do I mean by that? You cannot go too deep into things. Which is related to literally going too deep in the ocean. As a man, you ain't gonna make it. So figuratively, you, you shouldn't to go too deep because as a man, yes. you ain't gonna make it. You end up drowning. I'm basically getting paid up to one thousand four hundred. That's cool. Praise God. For all of my yeah, yeah, yeah. Besides that, when you go too high, you ain't gonna make it either. You ain't supposed to be all the way up there. Literally speaking, you're not supposed to be all the way up there in the sky. When you go so far in the ocean or in the depths, and you go so high up in the air, your ears start to pop both ways for a purpose it's too much pressure for you it's too much pressure literally literally it's too much pressure but figuratively getting getting into stuff that's too deep for you or too high for you it's too much pressure this is why god put us literally on this plane on this plane p-a-p-l-a-i-n praise god and even when you get in a plane p-l-a-n-e you got to come right back down to where you belong on the earth this is why we 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 have certain sayings on earth, such as that person is down to earth. What does that mean? They're humble. But now you was made from the earth, which is why even if you go into the water to swim, you come right back out to the earth because that's what you was made from. That's what you always got to end up going back to. Even when you die, you got to go back to the dust of the ground, which you was made from. You go up in a plane, you got to come back down to the earth, which you was made from. You, you hang glide, you get on a roller coaster. <laughs> It doesn't matter. You go scuba diving. You got to come right back up. Right back to that plane that the Most High made you from. The dust of the ground or the dirt. Praise God. So with that being said, um, it says, Surely, Lord, my heart is not haughty, nor my eyes lofty. Neither do I exercise myself in great matters when things too high for me. Surely I have behaved and quieted myself as a child that has weaned up his mother. All you got to do is take that visual of a child being weaned of his mother and apply it to your life. King David did it. And he had more wisdom and a closer relationship with God than anybody on the earth right now. It says, my soul is even as a weaned child. You take the visual of a weaned child and you apply it to your soul or your life. To be like King David. And beyond that, to be Christ-like. It says, let Israel hope in the Lord from henceforth and forever or continually nonstop. Because... He provides to us our expectation. We wait for him. We don't wait for no man. Praise God. We wait for the most high. And the most high moves by himself or he moves through people and things. But besides that, with that being said, uh, forgive me, y'all. In this video from my, uh, my sinuses, I don't know what's going on. I was not doing this before I started the video. But with that being said, y'all keep, keep up with the foundational principles. You go back through them, run back through them. Parts one. Um, and part two for whatever videos have a part one and a part two and we'll continue to go over these things because it's a curriculum for a reason A curriculum is related to a circle. It goes to something that goes around It goes around and it goes around and goes around until everybody that's supposed to understand it understands it like the back of their hand as we say That's what these principles are for praise God foundational Principles with that being said much love to the family shalom shalom street baptism